today's episode, we will cover... First of all, I would like to say thanks to my patrons who are supporting this channel. I really appreciate it. And if you would like to become a patron and support this channel and get access to exclusive content and my deep gratitude, then you can check out the link in the description below. I love old cameras. This is my Pentax K1000. A very basic but capable 35mm camera. Now as you can see it doesn't have a cap and you must cover the lens of this camera or else the battery of the light meter runs out and stops working and this has happened to me a couple of times. I'm getting a little tired of the aluminum foil so let's solve this and make something that looks really good and that works. So first step here is making a round circle, the size of the lens. This is the leather that I'm using, pretty thick veg tan leather. You know the thickness was fine at first I thought, but then as I wet it, I was thinking I probably should thin it out a little bit. So just using a chisel here, um, I do have a skiver somewhere, but I couldn't find it right now. So I was like, I'm just gonna use the chisel. Like I know there's a lot of people who are interested in getting into leather work and you really don't need a whole lot of tools to do that. I'm basically using my regular basic tools for almost this entire project. Okay, you can obviously make a mold that has an interior and an exterior. And if I was making more of these, that's probably what I would do. Uh, but I figured I'm just gonna stretch it by hand and then tie it in place. So I just took off the clamps and I realized they've been leaving these black marks. It's not like super pretty. Okay, this has been sitting now overnight. It is dry. Let's unmold and see what we got here. Okay. So first I cut it down in size, trying to remove some of the folds a bit. Now it was a touch too big for the lens, so I figured it could really use a sleeve. And I had a piece of thin veg tan leather, which I figured would be perfect. For a little added character, why not stamp it as well? You know, it's funny, every time I take out this stamp set, I kind of have the urge to make leather labels for everything. Because it's so easy to do, yet it looks really great. Now the cap was still just a touch too big, so I added some interfacing fabric, kind of the fluffy stuff, but you know, anything would really work here. Just with some hot glue, it created a much better fit. I also added a piece of elastic and tied it to the camera so that I won't lose it. So, all done. Not bad. I mean, it looks really neat. I love the design of it. And it works. So that's really all I, I was looking for here. And I was just kind of figuring out this, the design as I went along. And I love those kind of projects. The, those in my mind are the most fun. You're not following a plan. You're just kind of relaxing and trying to figure out the solution as you go along. So yeah, I think that's gonna look really nice on the shelf. Use it as well. Honestly, I don't use it that much, but a little bit. And then, you know, you can always develop your own film, which is fun. I'm gonna hand this over to Lynn a couple of days ago when I got relaxed, comfortable, and answered a bunch of questions. What do you do for a living, or is woodworking your main occupation? Uh, well, actually, both me and my husband, we do this full time, and woodworking is kind of not the right way of putting wood. We've been 
running this YouTube channel and making videos for the past six years. Which I actually had to go look at the, uh, my first video to see like how long has it been now because you know I'm terrible with, with the dates and years, I can never remember anything. So I went to look it up how long it's been, it's been six years which I find just incredible. See, the business is not really woodworking, the business is making content. Our income has been a variety of things from sponsorships to patrons to YouTube ads, selling products, that kind of thing. Although I have to say uh, moving forward um, I really would prefer to do less uh, sponsorships and things like that. Patreon full out. So hopefully I can make that happen. <laughs> that would be really nice. Is your future workbench a split top robot? I am kind of debating about the split top. I don't think I really... I like the idea of a solid surface now. And, and I'm also playing with the idea of a Scandinavian style bench a little bit with a vise is kind of on the side sticking out a bit, if you know what I mean. What is it like being a woodworking mom now with a little toddler running around? <laughs> I'm laughing a little bit because uh, it's very difficult. <laughs> Um, I think before I had him, I was a bit more of the impression that, you know what, everybody have kids, it's not a big deal, um, you know, you'll figure it out. And in some ways, if you had like dedicated childcare, that might be a little bit more that way, um, but I don't. First of all, you really can't woodwork with kids around or, I mean, I mean, maybe some people could, but you're dealing with sharp things. It, it's just really, really hard. I found it to be much more challenging than I probably thought I would and in some ways it's kind of one of the reasons why okay I'm gonna stop myself right there so that was a short section from a much longer video that I have available on my patreon page so in this video I go full depth maybe a little bit too honest at times you know I was recording this video and afterwards I was like maybe I got a little bit too comfortable <laughs> Whatever, it's okay. Now anyway, if you'd like to watch that full FAQ video, uh, there's a link in the description to my Patreon page. I've been working on making the main shop more efficient and better organized. One thing that has never been quite right is the clamp storage situation. So it was time to come up with a better solution, one that could hopefully hold pretty much all of our clamps. And design here is key. What design holds everything well? Is it stable, practical, not too complicated to make? First up, we tried this design. Piece of plywood with slots cut out that were big enough to hold a clamp. It's a pretty neat design. However, we realized that if you stack a bunch of clamps like that, it gets heavy quickly. So you would have to add additional supports. Plus, uh, it was kind of tight in terms of the design and fitting the clamps already. Okay, so new design. Let's take the old one, um, but then break it up. Basically create individual little shelves almost at your space so you have a slot in between each section, big enough for clamps to hang. And just using scrap plywood here, I mean, these kind of shop projects are the best to use up your scrap pile with. Then by simply attaching each shelf on a bigger piece of plywood, you don't have to worry about finding any studs or anything like that. Now we've had this set up for a little while and it's been great. And it's amazing, you know, how small changes like this can really make a space feel so much better and more organized. It's been really good. So if you're looking for a design for a clamp rack, then you might want to consider something like this. This, my friends, is a book press. Now Matt's primarily been working on this project and we will have a full build video out soon. So I wanted to give you guys a sneak peek. Now it's not completely finished yet, there's still a couple of things to add and work on, but it works. So typically book presses are made in cast iron, but since we're using wood, we wanted to make sure that it was heavy, thick, and featured solid construction which is accomplished through these dovetails. So let's take a closer look at these. And I just kind of wanted to go over um, a couple of things that are good to keep on hand and to keep in mind when you're making these half-blind dovetails. So these are the tools that are primarily used. We got a dovetail saw, and it's really nice to have a good tracking saw, marking knife, 
chisels and a lot of time was spent making sure that all the chisels and the marking knife were super sharp because it's going to make all the difference when you get into the actual work. Also super handy to have on hand is this small tri-square and calipers, both precision dial calipers and these classic interior and exterior calipers. And I'll put a link in the description to similar tools. So when making this press here we're using boards that are about two inches thick. And when you're first doing all your markings, it's a good idea to lay out the lines on both sides of the wood, especially when dealing with this kind of thickness. Otherwise, it's easy for the saw to drift and you won't even realize it. Now, the tricky thing when making half-blind dovetails is that when you're sawing the lines on the pin board, uh, you have to go at an angle because uh, you can't saw all the way through. So that means that you finish the cut with a chisel. Now, it's hard to see, however, if the cut is square in the back so you're looking at it from the front where it's narrow, but in the back it's wider. So it's a good idea to make sure that it's actually square using the depth guide on the dial calipers and your square. Along the same lines, these interior and exterior calipers really come in handy for checking that the distance of the pins and the tails are the same throughout. Because again, the thickness makes it much trickier, um, as opposed to if you're working with thin wood. Also, after you cut the waste out of the pin board, again, it's tricky to see the side that's hidden. So very useful to keep checking with your calipers and then making fine adjustments as you go along. Another practical tip is to make sure that you mark uh, your pins and your tails that go together. So AA, BB, CC. Um, I mean, if you were doing this on a router, like with a jig, then it's gonna be like super precise and you don't have to be as careful. But when you're doing it by hand, there's these very fine, slight variations in the wood. And it's just a good idea to mark everything, to make sure that it lines up later. And those were just a few thoughts regarding dovetails and working with this thickness. So it's been really interesting going down the bookbinding rabbit hole lately, learning all about software and printing and design. Now, before you get into the whole process of actually using these jigs, however, you first have to find a book, download it, and clean the text up a little bit. And I wanted to share a couple of quick things about that using regular expressions uh, to format it in a word processing program. The first step is obviously to find a book that you want to print. Um, and there are a lot of options out there. I mean, at Project Gutenberg, and there are other sites as well, uh, there are a ton of public domain books that have been scanned in using optical character recognition. Here, I'm going to download the Jungle Book. Uh, so I'm right-clicking, hitting Save Link As, and then I'm opening up OpenOffice, which is free. Um, all this might be slightly different in Word, I don't know. And then I'm opening the file and go to View and turn on Non-Printing Characters. Basically, this allows you to see if there's any weird spacing um, or paragraphs that shouldn't be there. And the reason why that happens sometimes is like when they scan in the books, sometimes like the font is old or the, the letters are really tight together. So the program doesn't quite catch, <laughs> you know, it may put in like two spaces where there really shouldn't be one or just weird like uh, paragraphs and stuff like that in general. And if you want to print, you know, a book, you want to like clean that up and make it the way you want it. So we're gonna use some programming, uh, regular expressions, uh, to format these old files and get rid of paragraphs where you don't want them. We're gonna do this in three simple steps. I'm gonna try to not make it too complicated, uh, but this is a really good little tip if you want to do this. That's going to make your life a lot easier. Hit find and replace, add the caret sign, which basically means that it will locate the object you're looking for at the end of a line. And then add the dollar sign, which will find a paragraph or a line break. And we're going to replace that with an at symbol. And I'm using the at symbol, I mean, you, you could really use anything because it's not likely to be used in old texts. It's just a placeholder. Find the dollar sign and replace with a space bar. And this will find all paragraph markers, not just the ones at the end, and replace them with just a space. Find at symbol, replace with slash n slash n. Now we're removing the placeholder at symbol, which we just put in, um, and which is at the end of the line of each paragraph, and inserting a line break, which is not a paragraph break. I know it's a, it's a little confusing, but that's it for basic formatting, which I do in open office. Um, of course you could go further here. I mean, you could add uh, like bolds and italics, uh, clean up other weird things, but those commands right there is going to help you clean up most books uh, quite well. I mean, if you were to go like through books manually and do this, it would take you forever. 
it, it would not be a good idea. Uh, so you might as well use these regular expressions and make the process like really fast and efficient. Now the next step here, which I will cover in another video, is going to be about taking this file and bringing it into InDesign, which is a book publishing software from Adobe. And then it's all about getting into things like fonts and sizes and formatting and registers and a lot of things like that. Uh, but that's a whole other thing. Now this information will be part of a larger bookbinding video eventually. Um, however, these shop updates, I mean, I really kind of think about them as sharing stuff that I am learning, that I'm doing, that I'm thinking about, and that is, and this stuff is part of that. Plus I thought maybe some of you guys would find it interesting and want to get into this as well. Uh, so yeah, I want to say thanks for watching this video. Let me know if you have any thoughts, any questions in the comments below. Again, if you'd like to become a patron and support this work moving forward, then you can check out the link in the description below. I covered a lot of stuff in this one, I think. I was debating about how much to cover and what to take out, but then I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna put it all in. We'll, we'll do that. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's ready for a shot now. <laughs> Oi, August. You took a picture. Uh, okay, okay, that's enough. That's enough.